It's now my great uh, pleasure to uh, introduce one of the members of our organizing committee, and this is Dr. Kamal Chamali, who's a neurologist uh, and the director of the Centara Neuromuscular and Autonomic uh, Neurology Programs and the Centara Center for Music and Medicine in Virginia. And he and his colleague, uh, Prisca Benoit, uh, presented a beautiful presentation Friday night to launch us off. So thank you, uh, Kamal, for being here this morning. Thank you very much. Um, I, for the sake of time, I promise that at 10 o'clock we're going to be finished. Uh, we, I'm going to go straight to the, straight to the points and then uh, maybe we'll mingle in the afternoon if you have questions and we can talk about that. So, uh, you heard me uh, on Friday talking a little bit about the autonomic nervous system because the autonomic nervous system we think is important in creating musical emotions. We think also that the changes, the physiological parameters in blood pressure and heart rate uh, can all contribute to the well-being of the patient and newer data about the role of a parasympathetic as an anti-inflammatory system. So when we kind of activate the system, we probably are creating an anti-inflammatory effect. This still has to be uh, worked uh, a little bit more. But what I'm going to show you uh, so um, is how do we use a piece of music and how do we uh, test it in an autonomic lab on patients? I'll give you a concrete example today. Uh, to, to just remind you that the sympathetic nervous system increases the heart, increases ventricular contractility, and causes vasoconstriction, whereas the parasympathetic decreases the heart, uh, decreases atrial contractility, and causes vasodilation. So blood pressure is the result of cardiac output times the peripheral vascular resistance. And cardiac output is the result of uh, a stroke volume, which is how much blood the, 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 the heart pumps when it contracts, times the heart rate. So as you see here, if uh, the heart rate goes up, uh, then cardiac output should go up, provided stroke volume does not change, and it changes very little in healthy hearts. And if the cardiac output goes up, then the blood pressure will go up, or if the peripheral vascular resistance goes up, then the blood pressure will go up as well. So this is how generally the autonomic nervous system works. This is an example. Those are receptors that are located here in the neck. And when uh, they're, they're called the baroreceptor, when the blood pressure uh, drops, for example, there's a signal that goes from the baroreceptor into the brain, the brainstem, uh, the uh, nucleus of the tractus solitarius here. Uh, and, um, and then this nucleus here is going to uh, uh, inhibit a, another structure within the medulla called the caudal ventrolateral medulla. And this being inhibited will let the rostral ventral uh, uh, lateral medulla being activated because it's disinhibited now. And by doing so, this is gonna activate the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system will kick in and cause vasomotor outflow, meaning the peripheral vasculature is gonna constrict. And then uh, this will increase uh, the arterial pressure. Also, there will be a sympathetic outflow to the heart, which will increase its contractility and its heart rate. This will also increase the arterial pressure. And centrally in the brain, there will be a secretion of vasopressin. Vasopressin will also contribute to uh, increasing the arterial pressure in the heart. So you see it's a reflex. At the same time, there would be an inhibition of the parasympathetic here, and this will result in a slowing of the heart. And this is what we want. We want to slow down the heart. We want to constrict the blood vessels. We want to increase blood pressure. So this is how the autonomic nervous system functions. It's a question of a balance between those two limbs, sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sweat production is also under the influence of the sympathetic nervous system. Um, and I talked in my uh, previous talk on Friday about heart rate variability, which is increasing in heart rate when we, when we breathe in and decreasing when we breathe out. Okay, we do several maneuvers in order to activate the system, the, the, the autonomic nervous system in the lab. And one of them is asking the patient to breathe in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, and then we will see, we'll see how the uh, heart rate varies with that, and we make some calculations between that increase in heart rate and decrease in heart rate, the heart rate variability, and there are normative data, and we can know whether the parasympathetic to the heart is normal or not. 
Another way to do it is we ask the patient to blow through it too, about 40 millimeters, uh, and we will uh, keep that for uh, about uh, 15 seconds, and then the patient lets go. And there is a series of reactions that happens at the level of the heart rate and the blood pressure, and this is called the Valsalva reaction. Okay, I'm not going to go into much detail about that, but there is a, a initial, uh, you see here, drop in blood pressure when the patient blows in, then the blood pressure will rise, and then it will go down, stabilize, because there is a regulatory effect. And then after that, the patient releases the blowing, and there will, will be a reaction called an overshoot, and you see how the blood pressure will overshoot in the last phase of the Valsalva maneuver. Reflexively, when the blood pressure drops, heart rate will go up, and in the last phase, when the blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes down in order to maintain that equilibrium that I showed you about. Uh, this is a tilt table test, so we put the patient on a tilt table, tilt them up, and then at, we see if they can drop their blood pressure to the point where they pass out, and this is the ultimate goal. We want them to pass out. As soon as they start to pass out, we will revert uh, the tilting, and out of 7,000 cases that we have done, not a single patient has uh, had a problem. So, uh, sweating, the same thing. We uh, can test it in several ways. This is kind of a sauna. We cover the patient with a purple powder, sorry, orange powder, and when they sweat, they will uh, turn that powder into a purple color, and then we'll see what areas of the body have produced sweat and which have not. And this is also mediated by the, uh, per, uh, the sympathetic nervous system. So we think that music is an activator of the uh, autonomic nervous system. And uh, this is the study model that I'm gonna show you. So what we did recently is we studied a mo modern vocal composition uh, for male and female voices and orchestra. We had eight patients volunteer to participate. They all had disorders of the autonomic nervous system. And the protocol is that we made them uh, lie down uh, silently for three minutes. Then we made them listen to the music with high quality headphones for eight minutes, eight seconds. Then there were three minutes of rest after that baseline. Then we made them read the words of the music. And when they read the words of the music, we uh, after that, it took about a minute and a half, then three minutes of rest, then after that, we made them listen again to the music while reading the words, and then followed by three minutes of baseline and rest. While we were doing this, we were monitoring continuously their heart rate and their blood pressure, and we have a new technology, relatively new, called the Finipress technique, which is revolutionary, where we can measure the blood pressure beat to beat, meaning with every heartbeat, we can know what the blood pressure is doing. And this is non-invasive. So imagine that the heartbeat beats at 78 minutes per, 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 beats per minute. And then you have 78 recordings of blood pressure per minute. So this is more than one recording per second. So you can know exactly between one note and the other, I'm not talking measure and the other, what the blood pressure is doing. And then you can monitor exactly what's happening. So, um, uh, and during this uh, protocol, we ask the patient to express their emotions, their thoughts, their whatever, impressions, uh, as soon as they come to their mind, uh, and then the technician will write them down and write down the time that they happened. Okay, so these are the results that we found. Okay, so what we saw is that this is the, uh, let's see if this is working, uh, here. This is the starting blood pressure, the systolic blood pressure at baseline. And then as the music started playing, you see a remarkable drop in blood pressure. Then when the silence came after that, there was a slight increase. Then when the patient started reading the words, there was a, a remarkable increase in blood pressure. After that, the silence continued to, a little bit the increase. And then when they listened to the music while reading the words, there was a slight decrease again in blood pressure. And when the silence came in at the end, blood pressure went down. This is as a group for the eight patients. Diastolic blood pressure followed almost exactly the same pattern. Heart rate, uh, we saw that there was actually a slight increase in heart rate, very minimal, uh, with music. And this was kind of maybe unexpected, but kind of expected at the same time, knowing previous studies. With silence, heart rate went up. When they read the, the words, heart, heart rate went really up. And then with the silence went down. When the music and the words came together, heart rate went up. And with silence, everything went down again. So what we found is that seven of, outpatient, of eight patients decreased their systolic blood pressure at the onset of the music. Six out of the eight patients decreased the diastolic blood pressure with music. 
three out of the eight patients had a mild decrease in heart rate with music, and three out of eight patients had a moderate increase of heart rate with music, and one only out of eight patients had no change in heart rate. So what stands out is that from that study is that the music dropped systolic and diastolic blood pressure in the vast majority of the patients, that the amplitude of the drop was a maximum of 23 millimeters of mercury. This is huge, and I was personally very surprised. So uh, I don't think even an antihypertensive will drop you 23 uh, millimeters per mercury this way. So first, then reading the words increased blood pressure in the vast majority of patients. Listening to the music with concentrating on the lyrics brought blood pressure lower than just listening to the music in only one patient. Then blood pressure and heart rate did not really follow the same pattern as I was showing you. Uh, and then in the majority of patients, systolic and diastolic blood pressure ended up, as you can see, lower after the end of the protocol than where patients started at the beginning, showing that if we want to relate that to a relaxation effect, then they ended up more relaxed than when they started. Um, all right, so the emotions that they expressed now, the positive emotions were often associated with a drop in blood pressure, either immediately with it or a little bit preceding it. And this is very interesting because of that question that which triggers which? Okay, is it the drop in blood pressure that triggers the emotion or it's because they felt this way positively then they dropped their blood pressure, still to be investigated. Negative emotions, there weren't many, but there were some people, you know, their sick patients, don't forget that, were associated with increases in systolic blood pressure and heart rate. And some patients really slept during the protocol and snored even. This is maybe a sign of relaxation. I was happy to see this. But it did not bring their blood pressure lower than what music brought it, interestingly. So we can conclude from this small study, of course, uh, we need more data, that music is a powerful modulator of the aut autonomic nervous system and can be used as an activator. Um, this technique I told you about the beat to beat is a useful technology in music research. The effect of this music on blood pressure is greater than on heart rate, okay? And the lack of correlation between blood pressure and heart rate raises the question that there probably is a different mechanism uh, than activation of the sympathetic nervous system at the heart rate, okay? Because if the sympathetic nervous system, it was the only thing that kicked in, Okay, so the heart rate would go up, but also you would expect the blood pressure to go up as I showed you in the beginning. The blood pressure did not go up. This means that the vasculature at the periphery dilated. So there has to be a decrease in sympathetic tone at the, vascular, at the vasculature and a very mild sympathetic effect actually on the heart because we didn't see that racing in the heart rate that we would expect. So overall, I would say that this is a parasympathetic effect rather than a sympathetic effect. Reading the words is a mental stress, and here is an example of where it is a sympathetic kick-in because both um, uh, the, the heart rate and the blood pressure went up simultaneously, which was not the case of music. So the relaxing effect of vocal music is more likely the result of music itself than the lyrics, and this is an important Thing to, to think about. Is it the words that make us relax or is it the music? Uh, according to our data, it doesn't seem that the words make us relax more than the music. And the variations in autonomic nervous system parameters that preceded or correlated with positive and negative emotions point to a role of the system, the autonomic nervous system, in musical emotion generation. Question mark, of course. Future directions, I think that music and the autonomic nervous system research is a feasible research, needs to be continued, and including other physiological measurements like sweat, pupil, uh, uh, respiratory rate, uh, skin perfusion, which are all under the influence of the uh, autonomic nervous system. We need larger samples, of course. We have to triage the patients by pathology. Uh, all these patients had autonomic uh, nervous system disorders, but we can test other types of pathologies. We have to obtain control groups, which are healthy individuals as well, and control also with classical compositions like Mozart or Haydn or even Debussy or Claire de Lune that Prisca played the other day, uh, something that would um, uh, relax the patient and see the combined effect. And then 
uh, we have to combine autonomic nervous system measurements with accepted measurements of emotions, which are questionnaires or chill measurements, etc. So I want to tell you that uh, this music that we've been talking about, we don't have time to play it. I have to run myself because I have an emergency to attend to. <laughs> but the music that uh, was playing is uh, the music of Mark Nekrug. He composed uh, this uh, healing ceremony, and his intent was to relax patients. And uh, at a later time, maybe we can play that music for you if Mark wishes so. But I would like to congratulate Mark for this composition, and I think that you achieved what you wanted to do. Thank you very much. Yeah, so we're going to let Dr. Chamali run to uh, hand, uh, handle a call and some problems at home. And uh, go ahead and do a coffee break, and he'll join us in the discussion group. So let's plan, uh, amazingly, thanks to Kamal, who I owe a huge favor, we're nearly back on time. So let's start back at 10.15 uh, with Dr. Tamino. <laughs>